Hi, this is Mrs. Han, and I'm going to walk you through this lab. Um, hopefully, you have a little familiarity with DNA already and RNA, and you know that uh, DNA is in the nucleus of every cell, and it's usually coiled up in, in the shape of chromosomes. And this DNA has um, information to make proteins, but the DNA has to kind of stay safe in the nucleus. So it can't go out of the nucleus to the ribosomes where the proteins are going to be made. Um, so what happens is mRNA will make a copy of um, a part of the DNA, copy of the gene, and then mRNA will carry that message over to the ribosomes and the ribosomes will read it and make the, the protein. Um, it's kind of like when you go to the library and you need to check and, and they won't let you check out a cookbook. So you make a copy or take a picture of the recipe and then you take it home to your kitchen and you make that, um, that dish. So um, that's basically what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it in two phases. One is gonna be first copying the RNA and that's called transcription, making a copy of it and that happens in the nucleus. And then that RNA then gets read and made into a protein. And that's called translation. And that happens on the ribosome. Um, I think here's a better picture too. So here's the DNA. And it kind of has to unwind a little bit for the RNA to make a copy of one side. And then it takes that, um, that message, which is um, the gene, and which is the instructions to make a protein and it carries it over to here. This is the ribosome. And then the tRNA are gonna come read the code three letters at a time. And each tRNA is bringing an amino acid. And as it links up um, with the one before, these amino acids all link together and they end up making the protein um, based on the code that was read. So let's take a look at our lab. Um, you can go ahead and answer those questions, and then let's go ahead and see how to do the warm-up. Um, so it says, look at the simulation pane. How uh, is the display? So is this, uh, this first question is, is this DNA or RNA? And hopefully you know um, that RNA is just slightly different. Right here, RNA has A, C, Gs, and Us. It has uracil, whereas DNA has A's, C's, G's, and T's. So then you, you can look here and say, oh, that looks like DNA or RNA. Um, this little blue molecule is going to be an enzyme. This is an enzyme that helps um, speed up this chemical reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on it. Oh, we're going to click on release and en enzyme. And it looks like it is unzipping this molecule. So that would be, hopefully, you know, this is DNA because it's got T's. Okay. So um, first, what we're going to do is this is, uh, this is DNA, and we need to make a copy of one side of it with the mRNA. So this has the code to make whatever protein we need to make. And so we have to copy the code. And so we're going to copy it with RNA. And so what we need to do is we need to, um, we need to match the bases. So it's basically asking you what bonds, which RNA bonds with adenine. And hopefully you know that from the slideshow, but if you don't, we can take an adenine and we can sort of see, um, well, based on the shape, you can sort of see that it's going to match the thymine. I guess if you put it over here, oh, it won't come off. Let's say I try and put it with the cytosine. Nope. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and match up one side of the DNA with the mRNA. Um, so this is the C and that matches with the G. Okay, 
So you're going to continue that down. And um, uracil takes the place of what? So here's uracil. Normally um, in DNA, um, we have T matching with A, but RNA, there's no T. So what is going to match with A? It's going to be this uracil. Okay. Because there's no, there's no T in RNA. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and build it. And then it's asking, what is the nucleotide sequence? And so, um, you need to read off the sequence. Okay. So it's going to be A and then something else, something else, something else, C. Okay. So you're going to read that down. And then here it's going to give you another example. Suppose the DNA was TAC GGA. So now you have to figure out what would be the complementary strand. Well, hopefully you know T matches with A, and A matches with, usually A matches with T, but since we're talking about RNA, A matches with U, and C and G match. Okay, and if you've forgotten, that's what we learned up here. Um, okay, so A's and U's match, A matches with U, and C matches with G. And if it's a T, I should have put that in here, T. Um, T matches with A. I'm going to find that symbol in a second, but we'll come back. Okay, so um, here, this one would be A, U, G. Okay. And then you would keep going. G matches with C, G matches with C. A matches with U. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and do that. How would a change in the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA affect the mRNA? So if there's a change in here in the DNA, obviously that would change up the RNA that's copied. Okay, if you mess up the, the original, then the copy is going to be messed up as well. Okay, now we're going to click continue. Oh, I guess I have to do it. All right, I'll do it real quick. Hopefully you did it already. So C's and G's match. C's and G's match. C's and G's match. continue. All right, so now we have our RNA, and remember the RNA is going to come to the ribosome. Okay, so here is the RNA, made a copy, now we're off to the ribosome. And in this picture, the ribosome is, is this purple thing. Okay, so what we just did was, was called transcription. And now we are going to do translation. We've got the, the instructions, and now we have to make the recipe. We have to make the protein. So um, what occurs during translation? OK, examine the strand. Every group of three bases is called a codon. OK, so you're going to go ahead and um, start at the top and read down, and you're going to um, write the codons. So AUG is the first codon, and then CUG is the next codon, and you're going to read them three at a time because that's how the ribosome is going to read them. Okay, and then um, we're going to um, have the transfer RNA bring amino acids. Okay. So these are our transfer RNAs. And the question is, which one do you think is going to bring the, the, these are the amino acids they're carrying. Which one of these do you think is going to match this first um, codon? So here's the codon. And then these are called anticodons. So which one would match AUG? Uh, obviously not G, 
A uh, U G G U A C. Okay, so does A match U? U and A and G and C. Yes, they do match. Use the gizmo to check our answer. Yes. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and put the next two uh, tRNA. So we're gonna say which one matches next C? Which matches C U G? Okay, well, I'm pretty sure it's going to be G and then U and A match and then G and C match. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, look what happened. So now the amino acids are starting to stick together. So when I put this next one, um, th then these two are now going to link to this one. And these amino acids, if you remember, are what um, bond together to make a protein. Protein is a chain of amino acids. Okay, so um, then uh, UAG. So this is actually a start codon, and usually there's like lots and lots of uh, codons. This is a very short one just for the sake of this simulation. But AUG is normally a start codon that starts trans, uh, translating. And then UAG is the stop codon. Now you can imagine if there's no stop codon, then the translation will keep going. All right, so um, place a release factor on the mRNA molecule. So I'm going to put this here. Oh, they bind to the stop codon, but I think we needed to finish this. I'm doing this for you. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what this means right here. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that release factor was another um, protein that obviously release it. And here we have our little chain of amino acids. Okay, most proteins have hundreds. This one has three. Okay, so now we're gonna go to continue. Why do you think the start and stop signals are necessary? And then describe what happened with transcription and translation in your own words. Okay, so you can go back and look transcription, what was happening there, and translation, what was happening there, okay? And you can also look at your slideshow. Transcription, we were, we were um, making a copy of that DNA. RNA is made from DNA, RNA copy. Put this in, okay. And then translation is when those when, when the ribosome, when the mRNA was in the ribosome and then reading the, um, the codons, reading the letters three at a time and the tRNA was coming and matching up with each codon and bringing an amino acid. So each, each tRNA was bringing an amino acid to the mRNA codons. Okay, so let's take a look at the final part and probably the most relevant part. Um, you do not need the gizmo for this activity. Okay, but this is talking about how, how genes make proteins and those proteins are what make our traits. So remember everything that we are on our body is basically protein. So if you create certain proteins, that's what creates how our bodies look and act and function, um, including pigmentation of our skin and our eyes and our hair. Those are all proteins that, that create that. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, you're gonna um, figure out what amino acids do these codons code for? So read this a little bit, basically, um, if we saw, I don't know if we can go back. 
but the tRNA was bringing a um, the tRNA was bringing oops, I'm going to show, go back was bringing an amino acid. So here it's going to show what amino acid comes when you have AUG. So you need to look for AUG. Here's A, and then the second letter is U, and then the third letter is G. Oh, A. A. Oh, here's the first, sorry, here's the first one. Here's the second one. So A and then U and G. So this is methionine. Okay, so you would go ahead and put methionine here. And then C, U, G. So here's C, U, G, and you're going to put leucine. So you're going to go ahead. These are all names of amino acids. So, so far you have methionine and leucine, and then you're going to have two other amino acids that are going to, that are going to link. So there'll be four. And then now it's asking, suppose you want a protein that is made out of asparagine, valine, and histidine. Oh, methionine, asparagine, valine. So you want to put the mRNA sequence that would code. So methionine, we already know, methionine is AUG. So we would go ahead and put AUG. Then we'd look for as asparagine. Okay, asparagine is any of these. No, that's arginine. Asparagine is any of these. So you could put AAU or AAC. Okay. And then you can talk about how genes... That, that code on your DNA, how that determines your traits. And hopefully you can, um, hopefully you get this, okay? That your genes um, code for proteins and your proteins are what result in your traits. Okay, so uh, finally, if you have an error in your gene, that's going to, uh, what we call a mutation, and that's going to cause, so if you have an error, a mutation in your DNA, that's going to cause, a, uh, that's going to cause the transcription to be incorrect, the mRNA is going to be, copy is going to be incorrect, and then the translation, the protein that's made is going to be incorrect. Okay. You can think about this last one. All right, hopefully that helps you with this and um, try to not speed through it, but just get the big picture and understand the two steps of it, how you made a copy of the DNA for transcription and then how you were able to make that protein, that chain of amino acids for translation. Okay, have a good time. Bye.